Hello, students of dynamics. Let's take a look at a quick one-dimensional motion example involving a burrito. So let's go ahead and lay out this example. Let's say that you've run to the burrito shop and you've picked up a burrito for you and your roommate. And so you get back, here's you, stick figure you, you're holding his burrito here in your hand. Now your roommate is actually up here on the second floor. You have a second floor apartment. So there is a balcony and he's standing up here saying, man, I can't wait for that burrito. Throw me the burrito. And one thing you know about your roommate is he has pretty poor hand-eye coordination. Okay, so there's a total distance from the ground up to your roommate of about six meters. Okay, which is around 20 feet. And let's say that you're going to release the burrito uh, from the ground up to release the burrito at 1.5 meters. Okay, so a couple things to notice. I'm using meters automatically in your head. You can think, all right, if I need an acceleration, a acceleration due to gravity, I'm going to use 9.81. Another thing to note here is that we're going to establish an axis system, and we're going to call positive going upwards. Okay, positive distances are going to be going upwards. Anything opposing that direction is going to be negative. And so one thing I can list on here is that our gravitational acceleration is going to be this 9.81 one meters per second squared. Now I like using 9.81 versus 10 just because I think it's a little bit more accurate. So go ahead and go with like 9.81 just for consistency. All right, so to list out some of our other parameters that we know and we don't know, we know that if the, the burrito is going to hit him right in the hands with a zero velocity, we could say that V, the final velocity is equal to zero meters per second. We can say that V naught, the initial velocity as it leaves your hand, we don't know that yet. Okay, that's one of the things we're gonna solve for, actually the primary thing that we'll solve for. We know that the initial position S naught is equal to 1.5 meters, and that we know the final position S is equal to six meters. And then we know we have a constant acceleration, A sub C, equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Once again, negative because it's opposing our positive defined direction, okay? So looking at these terms, it doesn't explicitly ask for time in this problem. We could solve for time, we actually don't need to. We can take a look at our equation table, which I've pasted in here for convenience. So looking through these different terms, one thing to notice is that since we're dealing with a projectile motion problem, which involves constant gravitational acceleration, go ahead and you can push over to the right side of this table. The top two equations involve time. This lower one does not. Okay, so if it does not involve time, that's actually a good thing in our, in our context. So we're going to use that one, v squared minus v naught squared is equal to 2 times a naught s minus s naught. All right, coming back up to our information, we can write this out, and we have v squared minus v naught squared is equal to 2 times now, I wrote this as a sub c versus a naught. They're both referring to a constant acceleration. I'll stick with my a sub c, and this is times s minus s naught. So rearranging this, we know that we're going to solve for v naught. So I'm going to go ahead and rearrange the variables first. We find that v naught is equal to technically plus or minus as we take a square root. And inside the square root will be negative 2 times a sub c s minus s naught. Now, the reason I didn't have to add anything to this side is we know that our final velocity, which is here, um, is equal to zero. All right, so putting in some numbers, we find out that v naught is equal to, now it will be plus or minus, but technically only the positive root is gonna make sense. And so we'll go ahead with this positive root here. Now, as you put in our acceleration, this is minus two times a negative 9.81. And that's going to be times my final height, which is six minus my initial height, which is 1.5. And so notice here that I have a negative times a negative. That's good because we can never take the square root of a negative number and give us an imaginary. And so we end up with a velocity of 9.4 meters per second. 
which is great because I know that you have a finely calibrated arm and that you can throw this burrito at exactly 9.4 meters per second. Okay, so a couple things to note in this problem. One of those is that we did add an axis system, even though we only had a one-dimensional problem. Every problem in this class, doesn't matter one dimension or two, always needs an axis system. You line up any vector terms. Uh, notice the vector terms of this problem would be a sub c, this s, this s naught. Technically, v and v naught are vector terms, but because they're squared, the negative signs would go away anyways. Okay, so at least in this formulation with the squares, we don't have to worry about the signs on those. So I hope that helps you outline for a one-dimensional problem how you could throw a burrito.